Welcome back. So in this episode, we're going to take what we learned and put it to the test. We're going to take an old Mario crappy sprite and <laughs> apply what we learned to it and see if we can make it look better. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking we do this uh, spiked shell enemy right there. This one right here. You guys remember how annoying those were? <laughs> All right, so let's draw that. So that character's name is Spiny. And I found, uh, I found a sprite right here from the original Super Mario Brothers. All right, so here we are. And I got, I got my buddy Spinny here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know it's Spiny. But how do you spell spin? Yeah, English. <laughs> um, let me just duplicate this. And then I'll kind of like show the steps. That might be pretty cool, right? So I think the first thing that we're going to want to do is outline, right? So I'm just going to go to black and we're going to do an outline. If you didn't know, I'm one of the developers working on Dwerb. You can subscribe to our newsletter where you can win alpha access. But also there's a wishlist but wishlist on Steam button right there. And um, we would really appreciate if you wishlisted it because it lets us kind of gauge how many people are interested in this game. Uh, it's uh, pretty nerve wracking because we're going to be doing Kickstarter pretty soon. Um, now, if you remember how I do outlines, I don't like to put an outline near the bottom. Now, when you're doing an outline, you kind of have to choose where you're going to put a jagged line and where you're not. So, for example, the face right here, right? We definitely know that these lines need to go here. But should you put a dot here or not? Should you put a dot here or not? Trying to decide what parts um, need that extra dot and what don't is pretty important. Because, look, if I put a dot here, the face doesn't look so round anymore. I think that um, Spiny has kind of a round face because if you look at, you know, for example, like an image right, right here, that's kind of what we're going to go for. So I'm not going to give, I'm not, I'm not going to put a black pixel here, even though I'm doing an outline because I want that to look rounder. All right. Anyway, let's just go ahead and outline this real quick. Um, something like this. On, on, on the other hand, though, right here, since this is a spike, I do want to put the black dot right there. I might need to move this outline in more. Looks like it's a bit too much on the outside, but we'll see. So for example, right here, instead of dragging this straight down, I kind of want to go in one pixel. I think, you know, we might as well start making changes now. I think that it'll, it'll look uh, like a sharper spike. Okay, so we got the outer outline done, but what about an inner outline, right? I do like to do inner outlines, but it's for very specific things. So for example, this spike right here, it's coming at you. And since it's coming at you and it's not just like um, a design or a flat texture on the shell, I think it does deserve um, an outline. I think it makes it pop more if you give this an outline. And if you look here, it does. It, it, you can tell that it's something that's protruding on the character. And maybe I'll even put an outline here around the shell because um, I'm using it as a line to separate the two. And I think right here where we go to the head, I think I'll fade it. I think I'll just use shading here. I think we don't need to go any further with that black line. For example, the leg could go all the way here, but by adding this black line, it really makes it look like it's um, on top of it. And then some of the lines for the spikes, they could come in. For example, um, we could have a line come in here, we could have a line come in here, We'll, we'll probably mess with that as we work with it more. Um, I'll leave it at this for now. Okay, so we added the inner stroke. Now let's see. Now let's see what else we could do. I think the next step would be to do some shading. And also, you know, the color palette is very limited here. But since we're not limited to the NES color palette, let's go ahead and add more colors. So. The spikes aren't going to be yellow and um, the body looks like the body's a little bit more yellow and the shell's a little bit more red so i'm going to look they, they made the um head red in the original nes one so i'm gonna just basically um make these colors the colors that we are that the modern spiny has so i'm just gonna go ahead and color the legs um this color i think i'm going to keep the orange for the head um just for now i'll um Actually, I, should, I should get a color that's somewhere in between so I, I can go to the like half halfway the of the opacity the transparency and that's how I can sort of blend colors uh, did you guys see that and here all we need to do to make um, this color brighter wow that's pretty bright already really all the way maxed out 
<laughs> what? It's maxed out saturation. I, I almost never have a color. I was gonna say that we can mess with these, but to make a color brighter, you can actually decrease the saturation. And by decreasing the saturation, it does actually make it look like it's, it's getting more light. So I'm just gonna go ahead and decrease the saturation on the head here, and it will make it brighter. But also what we can do to make it brighter is hue shift towards a lighter version of that color. So orange, a lighter version of orange would be yellow. So we're gonna go towards the, um, towards yellow. And now the head definitely looks a little bit brighter than the legs. And then for the spikes, they're definitely not going to be orange. I'm going to go with gray. Um, I know they, they're like white, for example, here, but I, I, I would just prefer making them, making them a little bit gray. I feel like it's a little bit more natural than if the spikes were white. So there we go. We swapped the colors. We used more colors. And I think the next step really is to just start shading. So let's go ahead and start, start shading this. I think the first thing that, um, that I want to do is sort of just add add shadows when i go darker i also decrease the saturation so you see um this right here i don't even know what it's called but um if you go left you decrease saturation that's why there's a bunch of grays here and then going to the right increases saturation so when a color gets darker i like to decrease the saturation because of course if the color is getting darker it means it's getting less light if it's getting less light it's going to have less color because if you think about it, in the dark, everything loses its saturation. And sometimes you can even um, tint towards blue in order to make things look like um, they're darker or nighttime. But that's a little too much for now. Um, that's more for like an outdoor scene or something. But anyway, so I'm gonna select the color and I'm going to decrease the saturation um, and also decrease the um, vibrance. So when you're really close up you you can tell the difference between two colors but you really always want to look in your preview window to see if you can see it and i can't so i'm going to go even darker until in the preview window it's super obvious that there is a difference in colors there have a really dark shading color there and I think that creates a nice um, transition. Um, all right, I think that's pretty good. For the eye, I think we have to go with black because on this yellow, you can't see the white pupil. Um, so we're gonna go with a black pupil. Now that we went with a black pupil, it is very close to the outline. The con of that is that it makes it harder to, to tell whether that's a pupil or a crease or what that is. So what, I'm, what I feel comfortable doing is making the head size bigger to add some Add some padding here, that way the eye stands out and it's just more obvious that it is an eye. I don't think I made this color dark enough, I'm just going to go darker here. Maybe something like that, no that feels like too much. I think about right there is pretty good. Let's see, maybe here and here. You know some of this is just trial and error, you have to see what looks good, you can't really just envision it at least at least i can't so i'd be impressed if someone could um so here we have the white shell and what i like to do it, to make things look more natural is not have the same color everywhere i think that um it'd be nice if there was a highlight but it's already pretty much as white as you can go so i'm going to decrease the vibrance and then i'm going to use this color to sort of um shade the shell so what I'm doing here is I'm creating a highlight that wasn't there before. I'm creating one right here. And then maybe another highlight up top right here. And if I go even darker, let me go a lot darker. It'll make it more obvious what I did there. See, if you look at the shell here in the preview now, it looks like it has highlights and it just looks more natural. It looks like you have a better understanding of lighting when you do something like that, when you create highlights on, um, on edges. And we're gonna do the same thing with the spikes as well. So for the spikes, you, you might've already guessed, but I, I'm not gonna keep the black outline. So I'm gonna take this um, spike color and I'm going to go really dark, but I'm not gonna go black. So basically the outline here is gonna be whatever the color is on the inside. I'm gonna go a little bit darker, a little bit darker. All right, that feels good. <laughs> All right, so you can tell it's not the same color outline, which is emphasizing that these spikes are sharp. 
um, I actually I'm gonna do even more work on this uh, on this outline so uh, on these spikes so let's get to it We significantly improved Spiny, and you got a chance to see the techniques I've been teaching in practice. Go ahead and try this with another Mario sprite and see how cool you can make it look. By the way, feel free to send me your pixel art. DM me on Twitter. Follow me first though. I'm not going to respond if you don't follow me. And I kind of want to do an episode where I critique people's pixel art and show them how to improve it. I think that'd be a great way for you guys to learn and see what other mistakes people are making that you might be making too. See if you can guess the canvases I got up this week. You know, you guys are the ones that deserve stuff. The, guy, the ones that make it to the outro. This is where I need to like put the A sprite keys and stuff like that, you know? Someday, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll do something for you guys. Cause you're the real fans. Death life. Yeah. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Please subscribe.